Good day to all of you and welcome to this long range FHSS crash course. My name is Sebastiano Breton and I'm a principal applications engineer for Semtech Corporation. Today, I will give you an introduction to LRFHSS, the new modulation Semtech is introducing in their IoT portfolio. LRFHSS stands for Long Range Frequency Hopping Spread Spectrum. It's an uplink only low throughput, long range communication technology. It matches the link budget of Semtex award winning LoRa technology, but also has distinct advantages. It focuses on high spectral efficiency, meaning that a lot of communications can happen in the same portion of spectrum at the same time. It is useful for terrestrial communication where connected sensors are either numerous, verbose or both, it is also ideal for communications to space vehicles. The footprint of a satellite antenna can be large, gathering packets from many sensors. Spectral efficiency is therefore paramount. And also for terrestrial communications where bands are narrow. A good example is India, where the ISM band is currently only 2 MHz wide. As an underlying modulation, we are using a very slow GMSK. This constant envelope modulation is very spectrally efficient and its demodulation requires very low energy per bit or EB over N0. In combination with data whitening, forward error correction, and frame-wise interleaving, LRFHSS supports the data rates from 160 to 400 bits per second. The sensitivity achieved with gateways of the current generation reaches an impressive minus 137 dBm. Better yet, for IT regions governed by the FCC part 15.247, up to one watt of transmit power is permitted. Because LRFHSS is classified as a frequency hopper, the link budget achieved is just shy of 170 dB. Here is what LRFHSS modulation looks like in real life. Every packet is chopped off in fragments, whose duration does not exceed the most stringent global dwell time limitation of 400 milliseconds. Sync headers sent one to four times on distinct frequencies last 230 milliseconds. Payload fragments last 102 milliseconds. There are in fact two main benefits to this intra-packet hopping methodology. Two packets competing for the same channel at the same time have a good chance of being received by a gateway. Indeed, hopping sequences are pseudo-random and numerous. Even if two fragments collide and get lost, it is highly unlikely that the next fragments will also collide. Thanks to the built-in forward error correction, the packet will be reconstructed. The same is true for a fragment of a packet being collided with by an interference. The same technique will help recover the packet despite the jammer. Therefore, the system benefits from a high capacity in a constrained spectral resource. There is also a better ability to coexist in presence of interference in the band. And RFHSS has been introduced in the lower one regional parameters under the form of an additional data rate or data rates in the regional specific data rate tables. Even if the technology offers a larger variety of hopping bandwidths from 39 kilohertz to one and a half megahertz, at present, only three options are implemented in LoRa WAN. For Europe, 137 kilohertz and 336 kilohertz. Each hop is an integer multiple of 3.9 kilohertz. For North America, 1.55 megahertz suitable for FCC part 15 247. Here, we use 60 channels, all separated by 25.4 kHz. And our FHSS can be enabled by a single ADR command issued by the network. We have run extensive simulations, comparing a chunk of spectrum hosting a single 125 kHz LoRa channel, or alternately, a LoRa FHSS channel hopping over 137 kHz. With the proper use of ADR and most of the devices using spreading, spreading factor 7, 
the estimated capacity with LoRa is 150,000 packets per day. With all the combined advantages of LRFHSS, the collision limit lies at 1 million packets per day, which is much higher than what is obtained with LoRa, spreading factor seven. In the North American landscape, hopping over one and a half megahertz, the LRFHSS new capacity limit extends all the way to 11 million packets per day, where it was previously limited to 1.2 million. Presently, the LRFHSS implementation running on a V2 gateway supports at most 700,000 packets per day. To remove this computational limit, more digital signal processing power and further optimization of the existing DSP are planned. In conclusion, we can say that LRFHSS complements LoRa in deployment scenarios where spectral efficiency is key. By construction, this technology is also Doppler resistant and fast fading resistant, making it an ideal choice for dense urban network deployments and satellite communication use. More importantly, its frequency hopping characteristic make it ideal for use in North America, where up to one watt transmit power is legal for frequency hoppers. This concludes today's presentation and I hope you enjoyed it. More material regarding LRFHSS is available on our dev portal at the address shown on the screen. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.